Welcome back to the channel once again, ladies and gentlemen. How you doing? I hope you're spectacular today. I'm making this short intro so you guys can see Trapper Man in his glory. And let you know that this video you were about to watch was recorded on Christmas Day. And it is supposed to be, or was supposed to be, I'm going to shake my hand. Thank you, thank you. It was supposed to be a collaboration with Allie's Pantries and Crafts and myself. She didn't get hers done when we wanted to. I told her to take some time. Well, it's been a month, so I figured I'd just upload my video. I hope you all enjoy. Quit talking, your bullcrap. Oh, are you telling them to go watch the video? Have a great day? Okay. Can I have a five? Give me a five. Give me a five. Thank you. Good boy. Okay, bite the hand. I love biting the damn hand. That's how I hurt my hand. So, I hope you all have a spectacular day. And enjoy the video. Bye. Welcome back to the channel once again, ladies and gentlemen. How's it going? Today I'm in the kitchen. I'm going to be showing you guys. Teaching you guys. Showing you guys. Whatever. Anyways. How to make a spiral cut ham. Mashed potatoes and gravy. I'm sure you guys know how to do that. And homemade egg noodles. So first off. We need to take this bad boy and put it into a pan and get it in the oven. I well, hope everybody's having a fantastic day. The lighting in here looks horrible because it is raining outside and it's almost dark. I have all the lights on in the kitchen, hallway, dining room. I picked like the dullest knife in the whole house to cut this open with. What we're going to do is cover it with foil. I haven't even opened this foil. Well, I hope everybody's having a spectacular Christmas, since today is actually Christmas. Since it's such a big ham, I'm going to make a splice. Cover even with I make the two pieces. All right, I think that's good enough. If not, oh well. So, time to put it in the oven. I'll be back, and we're gonna start on potatoes and eggs noodles. 
So I'm just going to chop up some potatoes. I already peeled them. I'm sure everybody knows how to peel a potato. I hope everybody had a, a wonderful Christmas with their family. Most of my family ended up being sick today, so we didn't really do Christmas. I got my Christmas present from my dad, and that's about it. Gotta wait till tomorrow. My brother gets off of work. I can get him his present and get my present. I don't know how you guys like to cut up your potatoes, but I like to cut them up about yay big so they cook quicker. I know some people that will just take a potato and chop it and like like that and make them big I they cook quick way quicker cutting them down I'm running out of room on my cutting board here all right, I got one potato left. Should be enough for three people because I'm making dinner for my dad and his wife since everybody else is sick. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these in the pot so they can be ready as soon as the ham is about halfway cooked I'll start slowly boiling these it takes about an hour for the ham to cook because it is it's a nine pound ham it says seven minutes per pound and then we'll do the glaze so I'm gonna put these in the pot we're gonna come back in just a minute we're gonna start making some homemade egg noodles Mr. Boo Mr. Boo. Yeah, there's Mr. Boo. We'll be right back in just a minute. So we're going to take six to seven eggs, depending on how many people are, are eating. I use six to eight eggs. Uh, since there's only three of us, I'll probably only do six eggs. It makes a a good amount. Now this is a homemade recipe that is quick, easy, to the point. I use gold flour and use whatever kind of flour you use. I, w I prefer to use a gold metal all-purpose flour. It's it's non-bleach. It's it's better and yeah. So first off, uh, together real quick. And then 
I don't really have a recipe for this. I mean, I do, but I don't really go by it. It's pour some flour in, because once it gets good and thick, you'll be, you'll tell when it's done. I'm I'm already making a mess. So on the stove top right now, I have chicken broth you can either buy it from the store as straight chicken broth or you can use cube if you use cube make sure you taste it because cube doesn't always give you the same flavor as like a chicken broth pre-made from the store I use cube, plus I also put some of my own seasoning in there. I put I put some garlic in there, I put some garlic salt in there, I put some pepper in there. Just taste test it. What it tastes good to me, that's what I go with. This is my my grandma's recipe. My grandma used to make this stuff all the time for Christmas and Thanksgiving, so I get rid of this whisk. This is going to start being a pain in my butt. I need to unload the dishwasher because I've been doing the dishes. Do a laundry day today. Just mix that in until it gets to the point where it's like a dough. You don't want it soft. You don't want it mushy. You want it stiff enough to roll out. Almost similar to a pie crust, per se. Now, I was going to make a dessert with this, but I went to the grocery store. I got in there, I got my stuff, and I got the hell out of Dodge because it was packed. Christmas Eve at the grocery store was packed. So, I will not be making fruit fried ice cream for dessert tonight. But, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see a post from a while ago about blood oranges. The blood oranges are ripe ready to eat, so that's going to be dessert. So freaking yummy. Alright, that is about close. Still a touch, touch too st sticky. Alright, at this point, I just, just dive in with my hands, throw a little extra flour, kind of just knead it in there, and I'm making a mess, like always, that's what I do in a kitchen, I make messes, that's what I'm good for. In my sink right now. I got up this morning and made waffles, bacon, and uh, everything went to the sink. And I have the dishwasher was already about halfway full, so I filled it the rest of the way up. If 
you can take it, smash it like this, and it stick. You can feel it stick into your hands. Add some more flour. About perfect. Yeah, that 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 is perfect. Okay. Now, I, I use my countertop for this. I know a lot of other people wouldn't even try this, but I cleaned my countertop today. I, I bleached it. This doesn't even do... The camera doesn't even picking that up, but it will. So, you guys can use a rolling pin. This is actually a fondue roller. For making fondue for cakes. I've had this thing since I was taking my culinary arts. You always want to make sure you continuously put flour on it because as you spread it, it will start showing fresh areas that don't have the flour. Don't have the fifth flower. About like that. And this camera is not doing this any justice. Oh, I'm gonna pause and wash my hands. Alright, so I've relocated the camera so it gives you guys a little bit better of lighting. So basically, I just have my pizza cutter and I'm just going to cut noodles. They don't have to be perfect. They can be skinny, they can be fat. And then I always take them and, and give them a little shake. Make sure the flour stays nice and coated on them. And there you have homemade egg noodles. So I'm going to pause you guys, take you over to the stove, and we're going to put these in.
Okay, we're over here. This has got a nice good taste to it. I've added some good seasonings to it. It's got a, a nice boil going. Here in just a minute, we're going to start dropping some noodles. try to drop them individually so they don't clump and you want that flour to stay on them because that will kind of thicken up the uh, the sauce I guess you would call it some of these are long so I'm breaking them in half you can make them skinny. I actually really like the little bit fatter of the noodle. That's just my preference. All right, that's homemade egg noodles. Let this come up to a boil. I usually, if we're making this for um, Thanksgiving or Christmas, we would usually use a turkey, and I would take the gizzards and the neck and the heart and the liver and all that, and I put that in here as well, and that gives it extra flavor, of course. And they pretty much they're pretty much cooked right now you can eat them right now but I like to give them a good boil and then let them simmer that way they cook all the way through that one's a big one I gotta break that in half so I'm gonna let this cook. We're gonna go ahead and pause you guys. I'm gonna start to mash potatoes here soon. The ham's got 30 minutes. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. It says 30 minutes on the stove. So I'll be back shortly and we'll get to glaze the ham and to the mashed potatoes and gravy. Or no, I'm not making gravy because these are going on top of the mashed potatoes. Yes. Okay, I'll be back. Okay. The ham is cooked for an hour and 15 minutes. So we're going to go ahead and just put the glaze on. Get that nice soaked in there. And then you're going to bump up your oven to 450 degrees. So for like the last, <coughs> um, let's see, what does it say? Yeah.
It doesn't say. It just says increase to 450 degrees. So I guess I'll let it go for another 20 or 30 minutes. Uncovered with the glaze on it. I'll have to uh, reach in and throw some glaze on it every 15 minutes, or 5 to 10 minutes it says, to reglaze it. I'm trying to get every last little bit of goodness out of there. There we go. So now, oh my potatoes are about boiled. We're going to go ahead and stick this back in the oven. 450 degrees and every five minutes we're going to go ahead and take some of the juices and glaze it again. So as you see those look so so yummy and you see what I'm talking about the sauce kind of thickened up a little bit, almost like a gravy in itself. Let me batch the bone. And then over here, we have potatoes. Just a bowl on away. Get rid of this foam. Okay, microwave. I got some canned corn in the microwave. I was going to do it on the stove top, but it's easier this way. So, I'll be back again shortly, and we'll proceed from there on out. So the potatoes are done. I'm going to strain them. I don't know what you guys put in your mashed potatoes, but I put a couple tablespoons of butter and some milk. It makes it soft. <laughs> Put some salt in there, <clears throat> put some pepper in there. Hopefully that wasn't too loud for you guys. That's it for that. Nice and fluffy. Those are done. Those are done. The uh, corn is done. The ham 
needs to be basted. So we're going to go ahead and come down. It's about done. It's starting to come apart in its spiral. Usually when you start to see that, you're looking good. I kind of messed up a little bit. Yeah. But anyways, I was saying I kind of messed up on the glaze a little bit because you're supposed to take two and a half tablespoons of glaze to the glaze packet. I took one of these full and added to it of the juice that came out of the ham. And that's one ounce. That, that was way too much juice, but it's still going to be just fine. I have I know it's going to be just fine so we're going to go ahead and kick this oven off that way we don't waste my propane and we're going to pull it out and check and see what it looks like Oh boy, does that look <laughs> yummy. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Alright, so I'm going to pause you guys once again. I'm going to get this taken care of. And basically what I do is I'll take it and I'll pull that bone out. Because there is a bone right there. I'll pull that bone out, that way all the bacon, or bacon, all the ham can soak up those juices. So we'll be back in a minute, and we'll go ahead and get to serving up our plate. So, <clears throat> I'm getting my plate ready here. I went ahead and took my dad and his wife over there tray full of food oh my god oh my god this is going to be so delicious so delicious Yummy. Oh my god. Oh my god. I can't wait to dig into this. It's like heaven. Just like heaven. Just like grandma used to make. Mashed potatoes with homemade egg noodles. Oh yeah! Let's 
try this ham. That's so freaking good! Makes me want to dance! Oh my god. Kitchen. I was just throwing everything around. <clears throat> when I was done, I just throw it in the sink. Do it later. What do you think, Bubba? So freaking good. OMG. Ugh. Mmm. All my egg noodles, mashed potatoes, and gravy, it's like heaven, I swear. And then you add some good old sweet corn. Mm -mm -mm. <clears throat> so, I had to go take my dad his dinner and his wife's. And uh, my dad was going through a little bit of a hard time. So I stayed over there and talked to him for a little bit. <clears throat> it's the time of the year where this family misses so many people. Uh, my, both of my grandmas, my mom, are all missed dearly. And he was over there crying when I came over. He was talking to my <clears throat> my my uncle, which is his baby brother. <clears throat> Long story short, I made him feel a little bit better by bringing him a dinner. So that's all I can do. So I'm gonna go eat this, and I'll be back, and we're gonna dig into that blood orange. So stay tuned. Ready? <sighs> it's like heaven on earth. It's probably going to stain my countertop, but I don't care. Oh my god. Blood orange. So freaking good. They do have seeds, so you have to watch out for that. Mm. I look forward to this time of the year because it's the only time of the year that the blood oranges are ripe. And I have a blood orange tree 10 feet out my front door. Oh my god. I don't know what the difference is. So good. So good. So That's my Christmas dinner this year. I hope you guys enjoy. Usually we will do a ham like this, or if the whole family is getting together, we would do a uh, prime rib. That's our main main thing that we usually do is prime rib. If the whole family is getting together, if not the whole family, we'll just do a ham dinner. Oh my god, these blood oranges are so good!
Peace. I hope everybody has a fantastic Friday. Much love. And treat each other how you would like to be treated. And I hope you get that same respect back. Later.